What is going on fishing bros and broettes? Today, we are gonna break through one of the biggest preconceived notions about these guys, chatterbaits. And I can guarantee you that something you thought about them was 100% wrong. Hit that like and subscribe button. Let's get to it. We ate that. Spring is probably one of the best times to throw a chatterbait, especially if you have early grass growth. Fishing like a jackhammer like this around that early grass growth is an absolutely killer pattern for covering water as well as getting reaction bites. So you can kind of rip it, jerk it around. It swims over that grass because that blade actually causes the bait to rise in the water column, which makes it perfect for fishing that new vegetation coming off the bottom. But one thing that I've been experimenting with, and, and you guys saw a video last year, I was playing around quite a bit with the Chatterbait Mini. And what I found is kind of interesting. There are a lot of different qualities to fishing the Chatterbait Mini versus your Chatterbait, like your Jackhammers, your Thunder Crickets, the new Slobber Knocker, your more traditional Chatterbaits, even the traditional Z-Man, the original Chatterbait. And that's what we're gonna talk about in this video today because one preconceived notion, one thing that we always thought about Chatterbaits is true with this one but not so true with the Chatterbait Mini. And it really showed itself in two different techniques or two different sort of patterns that I stumbled across this spring. And, and the first one is awesome because I love doing it. So you guys love throwing like a square bill on that during the spring. It's perfect around rocks, around like harder bottom, gravel, even sand. You know, you're basically, you're reeling like a DT6, um, maybe the Fritz side, and you're bouncing it off of that hard bottom. Those fish relate to that. It's one of the earliest places that warms up. They oftentimes use it as a staging area to go in and spawn. It's just an ideal situation. And you know, your traditional chatterbaits, that big hook and the way that they're set up, they hang up a lot on that rock. So if you'll actually reel them just directly against that rock, kind of slow roll them across it, you're gonna hang up a lot and, and it just doesn't work too well. What I've been doing, and this is what I actually really wanted to show you guys, check this out. Do, can you see what I've been doing? Can you see the head on that thing? So I have been using this Chatterbait Mini much like I'd use a DT6 or even like a wobble head, which is kind of like a loose jig with kind of a, a hook that kind of rides freely that you reel across the rock. So instead of fishing the Chatterbait up in the water column over this kind of cover, I've actually been using it to contact that cover. That's why that head is absolutely scratched off. And what's really cool with this Chatterbait Mini, and I don't know why it is, I'll, I'll be the first to admit, I believe it has something to do with the fact that this has a smaller hook. It's like maybe like a two out or a three out hook on it, but it has something to do with the smaller hook as well as the way the blade is set up. And basically it doesn't hang up. I can bounce off of rocks. Of course, every once in a while, you're gonna hang the thing. It's just a reality, but I can bounce off those rocks and keep contact with those rocks, use about a 45 degree rod tip kind of rise and just slow roll that thing much like you would that, that DT6 or, or like a wobble head style jig and get those same style bites, but they haven't seen this bait presented like this. It's kind of awesome. I've been doing it a lot on Smith Lake. I've done it on Gunnersville and some of the shell bars and the rock. But you basically, you make your cast just like you're fishing that rock with a DT6 and you keep your rod at about a 45 and you just slow roll it, keeping contact with it. The other cool part is, I think we talked about this in the older video, this new Chatterbait Mini, it's not so new anymore, I guess. It basically fishes one weight below. And what do I mean by that? So this is a half ounce Chatterbait. You know, situations where you throw a half ounce Chatterbait you're throwing a 3 8 mini. It rides a little bit deeper because you have less plastic on there as a trailer, as well as the fact that the blade is smaller. So basically you can get more depth out of a lighter bait. It also forces you to fish it on a little lighter tackle. And we're gonna talk about that towards the end of the video. But overall, you know, in situations that I throw a 3 8 I go down to the quarter. Situations where I throw a half, I go down to the 3 8 And it really allows me to keep that good bottom contact, not throw a gigantic bait, which is really Really key especially for high pressure waters or low temperature situations you know especially that cold that we had that was absolutely bitter kind of knocked those fish back perfect for that situation so the other thing that i'm doing with it is i'm fishing this like a jig and, and I think it's really cool because whereas normally, you know, you drag the jig, you don't get much report, you're kind of feeling the bottom in that. This kind of provides sort of a little bit of water displacement and a little more compact presentation and it's not hanging as bad. And this kind of links to another thing as well. I have been fishing this Chatterbait Mini around wood. 
That is one of the biggest no-nos for fishing a chatterbait. Usually you go to a spinnerbait, something that, that can sort of a swim jig, something that can sort of bat off that wood or has an arm to protect the hook. The difference between fishing, say, a jackhammer in the wood and this chatterbait mini is like worldly, dude. And that jackhammer will hang when you throw it really tight in the wood unless you keep that bait up. I can literally roll this thing. That's actually another reason why the head is so ground off. I can roll this thing over limbs through tree falls, just keeping that 45 degree rod, you know, that rod tip kind of up and you just kind of work it through almost like you would with a swim jig. And it does not hang up nearly as bad as your more traditional chatter baits. It's not, I don't know if it's the, the blade sort of protecting the hook, if it's the shorter hook. Another little trick that I'm doing, and you can see it on this guy, I bent the hook in ever so slightly, not much, but can you see how like it's slightly bent in towards the head? I did that and I think what that does is it helps it to line up with that blade. So that blade is protecting it. So it'll basically, almost like the bill of a square bill, it'll hit that wood and ride over it with that blade continually protecting that hook from actually getting hung on the cover. And it's just different. It's different because it's that swimming action versus like a jig that's just kind of drag and falling. You're actually kind of swimming this bait out of the cover, through the cover and around the cover. And, and like I said too earlier, you can fish it around those rocks. So a lot of times these tree falls will be on a rock bank. So you get it through the tree fall, you get it to the rock bank, you drop your rod tip and you just kind of slow roll it along that bottom almost like you would like a wobble head or something. So those are kind of the, the fun ways that I've been playing with this Chatterbait Mini. It gets a lot of bites and it does get big bites too. That's one thing that I think a lot of people are surprised by. It doesn't mean smaller baits, smaller bass. That's not a direct correlation. I'm always a big fan of fishing bigger baits, but after my experience in Florida, we fished a lot of little stuff, caught a lot of big fish. And especially in that pre-spawn mode, when you have these varying temperatures, when you get those cold fronts, when you get a lot of pressure because everyone's coming out because it's spring, they want to go catch some fish. The boat's been locked up for the past six months. Having something that's a little more downsize will get you more bites. It'll tell you more about like the, the situation or the water, the bass's attitude, and the big ones do bite it, especially when it comes to a chatter donker. We all know chatter donkers catch some big ones. Let's talk about setup and let's talk about trailers because I think it's kind of important. What I've been using for trailers, it's the Spunk Shads by Hog Farmer. I find that it's a simple, kind of easy presentation. I've always been a fan of the straight tail type presentations just like that. Um, I like that little chatter that you get from the tail. It's super subtle, it's, it's somewhat finesse, but you basically allow the chatterbait and allow the blade to sort of deliver the action to the trailer. And that's always been my philosophy with chatterbaits, except during the summer and the hotter months when you're looking for more water displacement or you're really trying to raise that bait above the grass. These guys are nice because they also fit the size of the bait. This is only like a, I'd say like a two aught or a three aught hook on there. Um, this is the three and a half inch. Uh, this is the torch color. Red is great in spring. Um, they really hold well on too. Even though that tail is very vibrant, the, the actual head of the plastic is, I wouldn't call it stiff, but it's a little more stout. So I can use one of these and catch like five to 10 fish on it. Like it takes a beating, especially with the keeper on here. I really like the keeper where it's that double notch keeper on the Chatterbait Mini, holds the bait on there. I don't use a lot of these things. That's why I have so many left, <laughs> which is kind of amusing. But there's a lot of different colors. Main choices have been the red. Um, if the water gets clear and they're shallow, moving way, way up, I've been using this bluegill color. And then I've also been using kind of like a pearl um, to match my, my green and white or my, my more shad or bait oriented chatterbait mini. Um, it's just kind of like your classic blue pearl, almost like the Kytex that we use. Now, one of the big keys is what you're fishing it on. Even though this bait weighs the same as, as sort of your standard chatterbaits 3 8 um, you do have to fish it or I'd recommend fishing it on a little bit lighter setup. What I got right here, this is actually the old version. This is a Halo Rave seven foot medium. So it's a little lighter rod. This is like an economy rod. So the graphite um, content is a little bit lower, which means it has a more moderate action. It's not like that super fast, super sensitive. It has a little bit more of a crankbait action, but it's still a graphite rod. And the reason I like that is what you'll find is 
even though these fish are active in spring, they're, they're eating this much like a crankbait. We're fishing it kind of like a crankbait, right? We're reeling it across those rocks, slow rolling it. We're sort of swiping it, sort of swimming it out of that wood around that cover and bonking it. A lot of times these fish just kind of suck it in. You know, if you're lucky, you'll feel that you know, that, that hard bite. But for the most part, these fish are just kind of sucking it in, sucking it off the rocks. I think in some points, they even think it's like a little crawfish or something like that. So it's kind of like that dead sort of jig bite where the rod just loads up versus feeling the bite. I am running it on a little lighter line. This is 15 pound fluorocarbon. Fishing around cover, gets a little bit sketchy. The reason I do it though, is it makes casting manageability a lot better. If you're skipping like way into wood, way into docks, definitely go up to 17 pound fluorocarbon, but you'll find it's a lot easier to manage the casting, skipping, etc. when you're fishing like a 15. I would not go down to 12. I think that's way too low, especially fishing around cover, but 15 to 17, going up to 20, it, it gets super unmanageable. So that 15 to 17 is pretty solid. Um, I also do have this on a seven, to one this is the shimano SL slx They're actually coming out with a new slx which should be pretty cool i can't wait to try that out um, but it's, it's it's a little faster reel the reason being is i'm really using the rod pretty much when i'm fishing it like a jig to sort of swim that bait around um, and when i'm actually doing it like like your dt6 or like that wobble head i'm pretty good about slowing down if you're not good about slowing down go down to a six speed reel um, a six carry ratio reel because it'll force you to slow down a little bit i won't go any slower than that though because sometimes they will just pick this bait up and they'll scooch with it dude like you won't feel that bite and you'll, you'll just be reeling and everything will go slack like you're like what happened where'd my bait go you know and then you, you keep on reeling and there she is if you have that slightly faster reel you're able to pick up some of that slack and uh and stop those jokers from getting off or dropping the bait before you set the hook so real quick since we're talking about chatterbaits monster bass hooked me up with the z-man takeover chatterbait and z-man box which includes even a jackhammer, dude. One of the best chatterbaits made, as well as my buddy Brian Thrift's new big blade chatterbait. So what I'm gonna do, since I like hooking you guys up, because you guys are always supportive of the videos and you love real grassroots fishing. So watch this video, tell me your favorite way to fish a chatterbait, and uh, I will pick one random winner to send this box to. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you've tried this, have any questions or wanna add anything, drop it down in the description box. I'll put links to all this stuff at Monster Bass as well as Tackle Warehouse so you can grab yourself trailer, chatterbait mini, and get out there and start slaying for spring. Hit that like and subscribe button. We'll see you next time, guys.